Hello, Matthew Taming here. Welcome to another video tutorial for Jay to store the Joomla e-commerce shopping cart. In this lesson, I wanted to take a look at the configuration. Just so you know what you can change, where things are located, and how to make those changes. So by default, most of the features that they've installed here work really great. So you don't have to change much at all, but I just wanted to notate a few things on each tab here. So let's go over here where it says the basic setting. Uh, enable J2 Store CSS. You definitely want to make sure that's set to yes because that is going to utilize uh, the C CSS that they've used to build a store unless you've created your own custom CSS that you want to utilize. But for the most part, you want to leave that to say yes. And then where it says load uh, the user interface here for the jQuery, you want to leave that to back end uh, and front end. So it's, it's utilizing both of those. And you have the cart checkout pages here. When you click on the drop down, you notice that you have Bootstrap 2 and Bootstrap 3. So what this means is that Joomla is the first major content management system to integrate to the Bootstrap framework. Uh, as a framework, they used to create beautiful web pages, beautiful buttons, and lots and tons of other features. So Joomla integrated it, and developers now are incorporating that into their platform. So you have Bootstrap 2 and Bootstrap 3, so you want to leave that as 3. Most websites at minimum should have three. I'm sorry, have two. So you want to leave that as it is. And then it says, who can see the add to cart page? Now you can leave this as everyone. That means that everyone is going to be able to see the cart, or you can have it as registered users. So, for example, if you have a, a store that you don't want everyone to see the add to cart, then you can click this to use uh, for registers only. So, when someone creates an account, that's the only time that they're going to be able to see that. And then you have the date format. So at the bottom here, you have the folder path for the digital products. So if you sell like, you know, softwares or things like that and that people don't have to physically have, you can put a path that you want those to be uploaded to. And every time that someone has to download it, it's going to get, get the content from that part. And let's take a look at the store tab. The store type you have, you have to regenerate the cron. A cron pretty much just is automated process so things you don't have to keep doing all, all the time uh, j to cart can do that process for you would have to contact uh, your web hosting uh, company to ask them if you need some assistance uh, with setting up the crime but this is the crime key here that you can generate and use and it's going to show you the last time the crime was ran and, and things like that and then for the store info you want to make sure that you have the correct email because anytime there's a new order uh, payment things like that the system is going to send the email to whatever address that you have on there and then there's the part that you put in your store name uh, the location you don't have to put that it's not required but the part that is required is the currency the, the zip code and the country name everything else is just optional and then you have to pound in the measurements you can choose from there and let's take a look at the product you can have it in catalog mode, which is just for viewing only. People won't be able to purchase anything. They can just view the products. And then you have the SKU. You can put the SKU. Uh, that's optional for some, but you may want to consider that. And then the manufacturing, the brand. So as you're adding product to your store, each option is going to be for you to put the brand for that particular product. So, for example, if you have an iMac or if you have a MacBook Pro, if you have a Windows, you can put the maker. Is it HP? Is it Dell? Or is it Apple? You have the option to put that there. And then the quantity of these here, okay, you can leave the default for these here. And then where it says number of columns for related products. At the bottom of the card, you can add related products. You can add up to three, four different columns, but you don't want to have too many columns there. So by default, that is set to three, and that's okay. And then for the inventory, do you want to manage inventory? If you set to enable inventory, the system is going to let people know how many inventory that you have, how many products you have for a particular item. So if you have 20, it's going to let them know only 20 left if you have so-and-so. Now, this is where you come in to do that. And you can also cancel and release pending uh, stock. So you can hold the stock for, for a little while, and the system is going to you know, hold it for a period of time that you designate here. And then after that time it expires, and it's going to clear it out. And then you have stock display. You can choose to always show the stock. In other words, do you want the product to say three products left, 20 items left in stock, and so on and so forth. That's up to you. And the minimum sale quantity. This is really important for you to know. The minimum sale. If you want people to purchase one product uh, or if you want them to purchase multiple you want to make sure that you're setting the minimum sale quantity. For example, 
If the minimum sale is five and someone wants to purchase just two items or just one item from your store, the system is not going to allow them to do that because you set the minimum to five. What you want to do is you want to leave this here at just as one. The same thing too for the max sale quantity. So if you say the max sale quantity is $20, if someone comes in your store and wants to purchase an item that's $50, because you've, you've told the system to cap it at 50, uh, they won't be able to purchase that. And the same thing goes here for the stock. So let's take a look at the tax. Now with the tax, you can incorporate the price and the tax, or you can have the tax after when they're checking out. So for example, if you have an item that sells for $3 and tax is $2, you can make the item $5, meaning that the tax is incorporated, included in the product fee, or you can have it set up where they can have the $3 and once they're checking out, they can you know check out to get the tax um, as well. So that that's where this coming. Do you want to just break you know the price in the cart, include tax or exclude tax? Now that's something that you choose to do, but it's it's pretty much up to you. And then you have the discount. If you have coupons, gift gift vouchers, you can enable this here. And I'll show you later on how to create the gift vouchers and the, uh, the, the coupons. So anytime that someone wants to purchase things on your site, if they have the right coupons, you can limit the coupon. You can set the dates, how long it is before they expire, and they can utilize that part of it. And then here with the cart, uh, you can utilize the default positions or use tags. With J2, J2 cart, anytime that you're creating an item, J2 store is going to give you tags that you can incorporate in your article pages. So this is really great too if you want to utilize those. And later on, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that so that makes a lot more sense. And the word says continue shopping. When someone wants to continue shopping, where do you want them to be redirected to? Re to a previous page, to a menu, or to a custom URL? You can do that. And you can put that URL right there or you can just leave redirect to previous page. And then you have the, the add to cart button class. Now this once again is utilizing to the bootstrap uh, framework. So primary is just a color of the button. So you have primary, you have info, you have uh, success and some of the other ones that you can change that to and kind of experiment and see how that looks. And then for the cart, empty cart, once it's redirect, you can lift the cart view to a menu. And once again, you can change that. And then it should go through here. You pretty much just have to kind of see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. There are some things that you may want to uh, do based on the type of store that you're setting. For example, some people may want to allow the guest to check out and other people may not. So if you want the guest to check out, you click on yes. Guests are going to be able to check out. And also customer notes. The customer is going to be able to leave notes. So if they're purchasing something, they can let you know additional notes in reference to what they've purchased. And you scroll down here. And at the very bottom here is to clear card data older than. So if you want the data to be cleared every week, every two weeks, every month, every two months, every three months, you have that option here. What that means is that sometimes when people come on your store and they click add to cart, if they don't check out right away, that cart is, the item is going to stay in that cart. So you can designate how long you want that to stay there on the cart. And then, of course, you have the checkout layout here. Now, if you have these, you should have just blank. What you want to do is you want to click on pre-populate, and it's going to pre-populate some items uh, just to kind of help you out along the way. So when people are checking out, they can see their first name, as you see here, their last name, their email, just some of the generic stuff that's required for them to check out. And then you have the order. You can put the order prefix invoice here. What number do you want it to start at? You can put 1, 1,000, 300. You can put letters, combination, mix, and the system is going to do that for you. And then you want to show the link to order history after payment. Once they purchase something, they can have a link that says, okay, this is what you've purchased. This is your history, and they can kind of check that. And then there's a downloads tab that's included in every uh, tab. So on their drop-down menu on the front end, you can include my downloads tab so they can see all the items that they've downloaded in their profile or you can hide that, that's pretty much up to you. And then the customer can see order with the status. So when they order something, they can check the status. Is it confirmed, is it processed, is it fail? is it pending, is it new, or is it canceled? So they know exactly where uh, the status of the order. And you can also include thumbnail in, in the email template. So when you send emails out, you can include the thumbnail in there. And then the update, this is where you put in your J2 store information here. You want to make sure that you get it, you log in on this site, and you put that information because 
anytime there's a new version that's released, you can be able to update your site. And then you have your templates. By default, it's sent to a mail template to send mail. It's okay to be informed. So you want to leave this here because it's recommended. The other one is not recommended. You have to do a little bit more technical stuff. So you want to just leave this as the recommended unless you really know what you're doing in terms of the technical part of it. But this, what's checked right now, that should be just fine. And then your terms and condition. Do you want people to agree to your terms and condition before completing uh, the orders? If so, you click on yes, then you have to create an article, which we're going to do later on, and connect this. So anytime that they want to check out, they would first have to agree to this uh, before completing their, their order. So that brings us to the end of this lesson. Make sure that you subscribe on my YouTube channel, like on Facebook, follow on Instagram, so that anytime that a new video has been released, you're going to be the first person to get access to it.